here. Oh my god, I got all of them. Hello. How's it going? Pretty good, thank you. Thanks for the, the delay. Uh, I guess, Scott, we're, we are ready to begin whenever you are. Uh, Darro, how about a sound check? Can, can you hear us yes. okay? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think the first thing we need to address <clears throat> is a rumor that uh, one of you actually knows Blake Carrera. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'm, uh, I actually joined Iowa's about three months ago, and I'm, I'm recording the third album with him, with him as we speak. You're recording another one? We're recording a third album for Iowa's. I know that the second one is about to go out uh, in, a, in a few weeks. We're already recording the third one. We have um, seven songs so far. That is odd. That's incredible. So I got the scoop here. That there's, <laughs> so before the Iowa's takes over the world, there's another one. That That's awesome. I had Blake on a couple weeks ago, and it, it one of my favorite interviews ever. Yeah, he's, he's a really sweet dude. Uh, don't get fooled by his satanic persona. He is actually the sweetest teddy bear you will ever meet. And he's funny as hell. Yes, he is. I used to think he hated me because I've been on Fuzz Club with him a couple of times. He has that really straight straight face, straight delivery. And, yeah. uh, and then I started realizing half the time it's a joke. He's just waiting to see if anybody gets it. Yeah, pretty much. So, dudes, welcome to Clean and Sober Stoner. I have a few questions. Like, when was the actual release date for the album? It was September 8th, right? Yeah, for some reason. I thought it released back in August, and I haven't figured out. So, um, I'll, well, I'll be we, the first. We released a, a single in August, but the full okay. album in September. Good, because um, Deep, uh, Demons Seem to Gather is my number one album for September. No way. I thought that, so Baroness is number two. What? And Lord Velvet, number three. Wow. Well, I'll, I will put you up against Baroness in a few ways. Obviously, Gina is a brilliant genius guitar player. Um, the whole band is. But you guys, like, hit right out the gate with this album with a power of fury and a freshness that, to be honest, I'm hearing a lot this year. It's just you guys did it even better. So how did you guys get together? What, what's the whole idea behind the band? Someone, go. Well, um, we've been friends for over a decade. So we've known each other from, from basically from the metal scene in Mexico City. Um, and uh, we just stayed in touch when I emigrated to the US. We stayed in touch and we were still friends. Over the years, we've continued to like keep in touch and we've even traded shows like with some of the bands that I played here in the US. We've uh, had the chance to um, tour in Mexico and open shows for, for Luan Tarro's other band. Luan Tarro playing another pretty well-established rock band in Mexico called Cubo. And so we just stayed in touch and uh, Demons, my friends, basically was born organically in the, in the, um, in March, 2022, uh, during South by Southwest of that year, uh, I was performing at South by Southwest with my former band, uh, a desert rock band from Washington DC called Fellowcraft. And uh, Fellowcraft was supposed to record um, an EP that weekend. Uh, we had already booked uh, some time with Jeff Henson at Red, Red Ranch Nova. Uh, sorry, Red Nova Ranch, uh, his studio in Austin, it's Texas. And uh, the weekend off, the dudes in Fellowcraft decided that they would rather just party and have fun and that they didn't want to record anymore. So I was stuck with a, with a book studio and a recording session ready to go and no band to record with. So I just hit up my buddies, Luan Tarro, back in Mexico City, and to ask them, like, we haven't seen each other since before the pandemic. Uh, would love to catch up with you guys. Would you guys be down to come to Austin and just like jam, see what happens? And they immediately said yes, got on a, hopped on a plane, and uh, we spent three days that weekend recording, and uh, we basically wrote and recorded three songs that weekend, like completely, like start to finish. We had three songs completed by the end of the weekend. We did one song per day, and literally at the beginning of the day, we just went into the studio. Jeff sat down with us and he's like, cool, what do you guys want to record? And we were like, we have no idea. Let's just play. Let's <laughs> see what happens. And that's how the first three songs of the album were born. Uh, the songs that we recorded that weekend were Bring the Night, we are the resistance and make them pay. Yes. And, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. <clears throat> no, I, I'm not buying this. You're telling me that make them pay was written in one day? R yeah. written, and recorded, written and recorded in one day. Yes. I, I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed to say that song made me cry. And it made me cry so hard. I, I was sitting, I was up in the bedroom with Newbie Doomer, and I, I've got the headphones on. And it's a so make them pay starts out. It's it's how would you describe it? Because for me, it's a straight ahead rocker that could have been done by Dokken, that could have been by any metal band at any era. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Well, the the starting for make them pay is really funny because the so make them pay was recording on a Sunday, 
on Saturday night, we left the studio at around 9 p.m. after recording We Are The Resistance, and we were like okay. dest destroyed. We went to in and out we had some burgers, we had the dinner, and then we just crashed and went to sleep because we knew that we had to do it again the next day. That evening at 9, I, I dreamt with the main riff, the... And so I just woke up and I was tapping the riff, and then at breakfast I was like, guys, I think I have a, a riff for, for today's song. And I think it was Tarro who just laughed and said that, that kind of sounds like do has from Ramstein, like I don't know. So like, okay, so let's let's play with that and just make it different, so it doesn't sound like Ramstein. And they're like, okay, that's a challenge. Let's have fun with it. And so the entire song just came out of this like riff that I woke up and had stuck in my head. But by by like the first after the writing the first couple of minutes, we were like, okay, that's a, that's as far as the idea goes. There's no way we can stretch this any further. So let's just do something different. And that's when we just started jamming with one chord. And we just, we thought we, it was going to go somewhere else, but we just were like, no, this fits. Why does it have to be anything more complicated than like that? Let's just, let's just groove on this one chord and just like squish it and like, like squeeze out of all, every single last drop of juice that we can out of this one chord, out of this one nasty chord. And that, that's the concept of the middle part. But what it brought to mind for me immediately was My Arms, Your Hearse, or Still Life Era Opeth, the but, way the way that they would do that, they, they take out a main theme and then take you somewhere else and then launch back into the theme that twice as hard. And I'm sitting there and I'm just crying. Like, like it was, it was like the first time I heard Blackwater Park Wow. in, in that it, it's like, now I am not saying you wrote Blackwater Park. Okay. So I'm, I don't blow that kind of smoke, but it had the same effect because I think heavy metal, heavy music in general, it, it does, even if it's not saying anything, it's still a bit of a message and it's still a bit of a journey. How you pack that into three minutes of, well, I just think it's three minutes of perfect. I, I love that song. And, and it's a, a, like Opeth, as soon as I heard that, I went back to the beginning and started paying attention. The drumming is Taro, right? Yeah. The drumming is, so who are your influences? Because I swear, you've got some old school, are you Swedish? No, I'm pure Mexican. <laughs> so who are the guys? Who are the guys that you grew up like just listening to over and over again? Well, I, I let me tell you, the, one of the, the heroes that I have is uh, Carter Buford from Dave Matthews Band. I don't know if it's, it's, if that's good or if that's, it's bad or good. I don't know. One of them is, is, is he. I mean, he is so um, creative with with all all his pieces and uh, all his rhythms. And uh, another one I really like, I actually, I, I love his uh, John Bottom for um, Led Zeppelin. I love him. I love, I love his power. I love the way he plays. He, he was an animal. He was, but you also have a dexterity to it that, that reminds me of like uh, maybe a Bill Ward or, or even Bill Bruford, just your ability to, and by the way, you do that because of the killer bass playing from Is Lou, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. you're a bass player's nightmare because <laughs> I can't make heads or tails. Like when, when I'm listening to your music, I can't, you don't just play the root of, of the chord. Every now and then you throw these things in there and, and it's, it confuses me uh, in the best way possible. Okay, and again, three days. Three days you guys. Uh, yeah, can you guys listen to me? Okay. okay. Yeah. I can barely hear you. It's a, you're, you're a little bit far away. Better? Better. Better. Oh, awesome. Yeah, great. Yeah, it's like, a, you know, uh, three songs, each one, one per day. It was like a, it was like a nice freaking ride, I must say. It's like, a, it was an adventure that we've never been before there uh, previously. And, uh, and baseline wise, I, I like to be, it's weird because I'm, I'm thinking more like a groovy guitar player, maybe. Not, not per se as a bass player. It's like it's everything about the groove. That's that's all, all the all the thing that I've been looking for in my entire career. It's groove. Everything's about the groove, and being being able to to get there, find a sweet spot where you can merge with the other guys, your band, which which this with, with these couple of brothers right here, and it's really it's really interesting because it's like um, it's like sometimes it goes a little bit melodic, sometimes you I, I kind of step a little bit a little bit back, and it's. There's, you know, there's like a certain rule within bass players and drum players. Like you always, as a bass player, you have to stick to the drum kick, always. But it's like, I like to break the rules a little bit. It's like, okay, yeah, there's a there's a, um, an important part of the song or the bridge or whatever, which needs to be reinforced by the bass, by the bass and the drum kick. But not all the entire freaking time. You know what I mean? It's like, a, a, that's, what's a, that's what's all about playing with a, with a click, playing with 
some tempos, playing with the uh, dragging a little bit uh, more, keeping in the pocket, you know, all, the, all that, all that stuff. And it's uh, it's about having fun and just be able to give what the song's asking for. That's that's the main thing about it. That's that's my way of, of, of thinking about that that part of the of the creative process. Keep doing it because I, I couldn't keep up. Um, bass player myself, so I, I and, and for whatever reason, I, is anybody else here at the Echo? Oh yeah. It's a, I know, there's a little bit of echo on your side. We can hear you. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a freaking mess. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Eh, eh, it's fine. Um, did you record that live? Because you didn't have you you didn't have time. To, you're you're shaking your heads. Live? Yeah, yeah we did live. Yeah. yeah. yeah Red Mother Red, which is it, it's a coincidence that I'm wearing their their t-shirt today. It's 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 not uh, on purpose. Uh, Jeff Studios Red Mother Red is basically just one live room. And the con the, like the the control room is in inside. The, so it's basically just like one open space where he has like the console and the monitors and all of the equipment and, and all of the the drums and the guitars and everything set up in the same room. Because like the entire concept of his studio is all about recording live. And so it was the only way we was ever going to be able to work because we were writing these songs at, as we were recording them. We didn't have anything. We didn't have anything prepped. There was no pre-production. There was we had the, the morning. Every every morning as we stepped in, we had no clue what the result was going to be, and we just like um, it was a it was a, kind of like a trust exercise, also in a way, like between us as friends, just like you no know, trusting each other and knowing that okay, whatever happened was going to be the best thing that could possibly happen, and I think it really cemented the chemistry and the bond of the band that we've been able to then hone in deeper on as we started playing live shows and we started promoting the album and we kept recording the other songs. So, for example, for out of the eight songs of the album, three songs were recorded that weekend in March 2022, and the other five songs were recorded in one day in January of this year, January 15th of this year. We, I flew down to Mexico City. We were together for two days. We had two days of pre-production in, in Tarro's house, just like uh, finishing the ideas and, and getting all of the structures ready. And then on, on Sunday, we basically just went in the studio and recorded live takes, the three of us, just like, so that, that those live takes took about an hour per song. We did five songs in five hours. And that was the basis. So the bass and the drums were done there, and one track out of the guitars was done there. And then out, out, out of that, we took about another week. I took about another week just doing guitar overdubs, recording a second guitar and recording a guitar, small guitar arrangements and guitar solos. And then after that, uh, between Lou and I, we took another two days. He took a day and uh, recording his vocals, and then I took another day recording vocals, and then that was it. That was the entire yeah, exactly. but that was That was back in March, when <clears throat> the South by South was week. Yeah. yeah, so in March, March, March 2022, 2022 we recorded three songs, and then March 2023, we got to play three shows at South by Southwest, and uh, so we, so these guys were here in Austin for four days. So three days we recorded the shows, and then on the fourth day we went back to Red Nova Ranch so that Luke could record his vocals for all of the songs. So the thing about this band and, and the whole concept of the band overall, but also the album, is just um, something that's very raw and organic. It's just basically like trying to take a snapshot of the chemistry of the band in the moment that we go in there and we're fully energized and 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 and, and we just do what we can and we just try to keep the we do everything in like one or two takes and then that's it but we just want a snapshot of of, of these creative outbursts that we're having in the moment and 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 that was something new for us because you know with our previous bands we've never done that before we've, we've done the traditional route of like taking days and like multiple takes and then punching in takes like oh that 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 that, that, that note could have sounded better oh that strum was a little bit off with the kick drum we, we could be tighter let's just punch in that part and with demons my friends we haven't done that at all we just uh, that we purposely kept small mistakes inside like in the recording like if you really hear if you really pay attention you can hear like small mistakes within the songs parts that could have been a little bit tighter parts where like the bass drum and the, and the guitar drum are a little bit off from each other but we kept that on purpose because we we really wanted to just make sure that this album was as organic and human as possible uh, and that could that <laughs> It conveyed which is the, the the love that we have for the band and for each other um, in a very raw way. We and also the play. Make... Yeah, sorry, sorry, Paul. And also we uh, we don't uh, record with click, so <laughs> so that's that that was pretty new for us uh, to you know to get used to to play without. To me, it was like wow, no? because I, I I always record with 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 a metronome in my ears, and in this case we said no no let's do without click and just feel it click and, and that that's how, how we how we did and, uh, yeah and i remember i remember that you felt pretty naked at the beginning yeah totally <laughs> that is that is so how so you felt naked how vulnerable was that because that's not easy it's it's not easy i i felt 
like like pretty terrible at first, but then I, I kind of um, get you know the the vibe, the group that you know that that, that gave me the, the guitar and the bass, and just you know let it let I, I I let things happen, you know, just just play them and feel it, and that's it. Lou, what what was it like for you? No click track, so. That forced you to lock in with the drums in a totally different way. Exactly. You know, we, we have certain, there's certain uh, wireless communication now between Tara and I. You know, we, we've been playing together for the last 10 years or something. Uh, so we, we know, we know uh, I know what he's going to do and I think he knows what I'm going to do and, and, and how I behave within my comfort zone regarding the bass lines and stuff and groove. So yeah, it was, it, I think the most difficult part was like, be okay with it the way it is. It's like, okay, this is the way it is. This is the way it went. This is the way it was recorded. So stick with it. No punches, no arranging any kind of mistake. No, oh, this octave note, please uh, let me punch it. No, 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 forget about it. It's like, it's just the way it is. It's the way it, it was, it was born, supposed you know? It, it was supposed to, to, to sound. It was, it was like, like Pablo said, like the, the, the um, it's like taking a snapshot of, of that, that very specific moment. So we, we stuck there and we, that, that was, at least for me, it was the most difficult part. Like I, I was just, I remember getting back at home with all the, the, the recording sessions and, and, and the, the Brutools files and whatever from that last session at the, at the Mexico studio. And I was like, oh, I, 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 wanna, I wanna hear everything, you know, in, in solo. So let, let's see how it went. And after two minutes, I was like, no, what, what, what the fuck am I doing? It's like, no, this is not, this is not okay. So I'm just like getting anxious and I would like to repeat every part I could, at least for bass. And I was like, no, that it's, it's okay. It's like accepting the reality as it is. It's like uh, unconditional love. I, accepting the ugly parts with the beautiful ones together. Well, that's, that's metal, right? Um, I remember um, I got to hear isolated tracks from Iron Maiden. I think it was their second album, Killers. And it sounds like crap. Uh, the isolated it sounds like crap because he, he uses those punchy rotor wound strings um he's got the treble boosted and there's all sorts of uh, hum but man you put it into the mix and it flies um exactly the context it's really I, I hate to mention this but black sabbath recorded their first album kind of the same way yeah. but but they had months if not a year to polish out the songs right so they went into the studio and they hit you guys wrote the songs then recorded them well, at least in the case of the first three songs. With the other five, it was a longer process where we... Because we are a long distance band. I live in Austin, Texas, and then Lou and Taro live in Mexico City. So the, word that, the, the way that we can make it work is by basically creating ideas, uh, file sharing, I'll record a riff, or I'll record a, like, a, like ideas, like riff ideas, and I'll send it to them, okay. and then well, we'll arrange them. But it's not like you went to a club and played them three times a day, four days a week. No. So Now, there's a fourth member to your band that I think we really need to talk about, because the more I'm hearing you, the more my mind is blown. Now I love the record even more. Um, who's the guy that recorded, produced, and, and mixed and mastered? at this Jeff Jeff, Jeff yeah. Anton, the, he's a guitar player in duo yeah um, I believe he's also recorded uh, Spirit of Drift yeah he's recorded a ton of like uh, uh, stoner bands he, he recorded Warlong's last album he recorded Ooh. High Desert Queen he recorded uh, Greenbeard's last album Variant uh, so yeah, he's um, he's definitely an institution in in, in Texas. In the none of those none of those bands none of those albums sound like this. Was it difficult for him? How did he embrace the? We're just going to do a live and whatever happens happens. How was that for him? It was perfect. He's a perfectionist. <laughs> he was so down with the idea. He was like, yeah, sure, whatever, man. Let's just, like let's just see what happens. Like yeah. But the I, other thing that we say is that he was super down when we recorded the, the instrumental parts of the songs. But he was so critical and so tough on us okay. when we recorded vocals. That was okay. the part where he was like, street as fuck. The vocals. The vocals are great. And I just heard another band today that, that they reminded me of your vocal approach. I think it's um, Bloodthorn. Um, brand new band just coming out. You've got very little processing in there, right? No like processing at all. No processing It's just any digital echo, any echo plate. We have some reverb. Uh, but it's a, it's an analog reverb that Bev has in the studio, and um, and then that's it. Just a ton of overdubs. Like, I think, like for example, a song like the Tower Falls, I recorded like four different tracks of vocals that are okay. blended together and mixed together. You even has some harmonies. Yeah, exactly. That, that was like very very interesting uh, approach. You know, like 
I believe that Jeff was able to manage the to graph or to to you know to maybe like get the best out of us in in his own way really very particular way actually uh, but yeah regarding vocals yeah, it was it was you know we were like okay this is maybe too melodic we don't know but let's let's go for it you know it's like a, what the hell and uh, in the end it was like a it has like a nice eerie vibe some there some in some songs it was like a it's more theatrical you know if, if you know what it means like a going mm -hmm. for the performing getting into a character like really understand the, the freaking lyrics and maybe maybe that's that's the root of, of every vocal interpretation it's like go go you're, you're at, in the end you're a character as well and you're telling the story I can't I can't wait to listen to this again <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm learning. And, and by the way, uh, audience, so we're, we're in basically three different countries. So I'm in America, and then Pablo's in Texas, <laughs> and then Tom and Lou are in uh, Mexico. Yeah, yeah. So, totally right. So the audio is a little, you know, I, I hope everybody is really, they've got their, their, their ears, especially the people that are in bands, because that's what my, my interviews are for, or for the bands. And, and I think for a lot of people, this is going to be some mind-blowing revelation. I know so many bands who don't have the money are recording, you know, a five-song EP over like a month or two. They're spending high dollar, or they're doing it in their home. Every little thing has to be perfect. And then once the drum tracks, then, then you're, you're starting to time a line and then the auto tune it, it it sucks the life out of metal so um, i love you I, I i love everything i'm hearing how did you all come up with and, and i started my article you have the perfect name how'd you come how'd you come up with the name it's a name that i would have sworn has always been a band it's like that's like some really some really deep dive 1971 you know there's pentagram and then demons my friends okay <laughs> tell me about the name <laughs> the name comes from uh, after we finished that three day marathon recording session and we were having a uh, dinner at the end of the last day before uh, Luan Taro flew back home and we, we really talked about like having something special and and then and, um, and how we I mean, we had no clue that we were forming a new band. We, we were just jamming for the weekend, but at the end, the final result, we were so so pleasantly surprised by it that we said, like, there's something here, we need to explore it. And then that entire weekend, uh, we spent so much time together, just like catching up. Um, the one topic that we all talked about was the pandemic and, and how we all survived the pandemic and everything that we had to go through the pandemic. We had, <laughs> each in our own way, had really a really tough time during the pandemic dealing with basically our inner demons dealing with anxiety depression um uh, relationship breakdown bre breakups and um uh, our own like just like de like dealing with our own internal guilt there was a lot of like at least for me like what i dealt with in the pandemic was just like being alone really made a lot of my previous memories or like fuck ups in life to, like come and like i had time to ruminate about all of them and all of the mistakes that i had made and i just felt worse about and worse about each and every one of them and so just sharing those experiences over those three days um we felt that that was something really special and so when we were thinking about a concept for the band we just said like let's just do it about that let's just do it about how how we are now in this moment in our lives trying to process everything that we experienced through the pandemic and trying to come out as better people from it as kinder people and so the narrative that we built was all about, why don't we name the band around the concept of trying to be okay with your inner demons and actually use them to your benefit turn them into your friends so that you can use them to grow and, and that's sort of where the name came from. The actual name comes from a quote from my, my favorite album. Uh, I think, I don't have time to go into this because I could talk about hours about this, but like my number one album that has influenced me the most in, in, in my entire life has been uh, uh, Skunk Works by Bruce Dickinson, one of his solo albums. Um, actually, the less liked, the less famous album by Bruce Dickinson. He has a track in there called Inner Space that has a lyric that has a quote in one of the lyrics that says, whatever demons tortured me, I love them as a friend. And as soon as I, I was hearing that after being, as after spending the, the weekend with these two gentlemen, uh, I sent, I texted it to them and said like, how about we name the band this? And then I just sent them the quote and then from that it, it evolved to like, demons my friends. Whatever demons torture me, I love them as a friend. That's a great story. I was hoping for a story. And then did you self-release or are you on a label? We're on a label. We're signed with Gravitoid Heavy Music. 
I was talking to a good friend the other day, and they thought the Gravitoid had gotten out of the the label business. And I'm like, no, man, they've got demons for my friends. Um, how'd you get hooked up with Gravitoid? They're well, they're a Texas institution, right? Yeah, well, uh, I'm really good friends with Damon, who's the founder of Gravitoid Heavy Music. Um, he's one of my best friends here in, uh, in Austin. And Damon sold the label recently, about a year ago, uh, to Jude and John, who are um, the, uh, the members of uh, the band Stone Nomads from Houston, Texas. And so coincidentally, like completely unrelated, we had played sh some shows with Stone Nomads. We, we, we played a show with them in Houston. They invited us to, last year when, when, we, when, when we played the South by Southwest shows, we also played a show in Houston that they invited us to. And so we met the dudes at this show in Houston and we really hit it off with them. And so when we, when we found out, when Damon told me like, yeah, I just sold the label and sold it to these guys. So I was like, oh my God, I love those guys. And um, after seeing us at the show, um, John told me, "Hey, I really, I really love, I really loved your set. And I really love what you guys are doing. Like, do you have any music coming out?" I said, "Like, yeah, actually, we're, we're working on a new album that should be probably ready in about two or three more months. Uh, we're finished recording, and then after that, just mixing, mastering." So, like, so like, as soon as the masters are ready, like, hit me up. I want to talk to you guys. And so, when the masters were ready, I hit him up and he said, "Like, we'd love to sign you guys." Short negotiation, signing the contract, and then that's how it happened. I love seeing Gravitoid um, hidden like this. Uh, how did you end up on South by Southwest? I thought you had to be Taylor Swift's cousin chauffeur to get into South by Southwest. No, man. South by Southwest is all about independent bands. Like, I know. <laughs> um, I think I'm funny. <laughs> Maybe I'm not getting the sarcasm because I'm not American. Sorry. <laughs> I'll probably edit that part out. <laughs> no, but you can't just be any old independent band to go South by Southwest. So, so how did how did that work out that you got got to go there? Uh, well, I've been in Austin for two years, networking my ass off. So that's the short, that'll do it. That's the short answer to that. Is there any day that you're not working? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> Last round of questions. How's the response been to the album? Well, it's it's doing pretty good. Yeah, you know the. We have received a lot of love. I'm gonna say love from around the world. You know, it, you know, from from Europe, from South America, from from the United States, uh, from Latin America and in general, and uh, and Japan, and, and you know, to 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 many places that that we are pretty um, happy and and um, grateful to 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 listen and, and to to read all all this. Um, uh, reviews we already got from the album, and that makes us, uh, you know, even even hungrier for more. We want to to be able to get in, in those countries, you know, to, to play and to get the chance to to, to meet the people, you know, uh, hand by hand, you know, said in, in a show. And um, as an independent band, we have uh, many many struggles with uh, about money, you know, because. If you want to travel to Europe, you need you need a, you know a lot, you know, and you you need to pay hotels, you need to pay, pay the, the airplanes, you need to pay the, the van, you need to pay from you know all your backline and, and all that. And uh, we are uh, pretty um, we're struggling, but we are loving this journey. You know, this this journey it all depends, and this is how a rock band starts. And um, yeah, we have all the energy, we have all the. The, 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 the positive energy to, to do it and uh, you know this is just begin you know it's, it's just uh, the first step and uh, we are definitely ready to to move to the second step one by one you know we, we want to take the everything just how it's supposed to be you know you have to do it one by one by one by one and take you know strong steps on, on our career if you had time at all to think about a follow-up album or an EP, any new material coming down the road? I think I heard that question. So any follow-up material that we're all yeah. 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 No, not really. Right now we're just focusing on promoting the album. That's like um, our main focus right now. And um, But we do have plans to get together again in Mexico in December probably. And that's when we'll start writing stuff for the, for the next album. When things cool down a little bit? Yeah, we also have a couple of uh, album release shows that we're prepping for oh, good. here. Uh, we're going to be playing a show October 20th here in Austin at Valhalla mm -hmm. and October 21st in Houston at Black Magic Social Club. Um, those will be our, our two album release shows. And then after that, of course, we'll also uh, be announcing some album release shows in Mexico. 
I came to this, um, as a white boy from the Midwest. I'm originally from Cleveland. You know, metal's a worldwide thing. There, there's South uh, South American bands, South African bands, Indonesian bands, and I, I just you know to see you guys come out of the gate from Mexico City and Texas and just stomp it super hard I think is great who are the other bands that I need to be paying attention to from Mexico or otherwise south of the border who am I missing oh well mm. that's a good that's a pretty good question <laughs> that's a nice question I mean um, there, there's a lot, of, a lot of bands you know that, that are pretty good but they're, they're a, a different kind of music you know a different kind of rock and maybe um, I don't know I don't know Lou, if, you, if you have you have any yeah at least for, for Mexico uh, uh, we have um we have Comanchet, we have Three Wheeler Band, we have um, uh, this band from uh, from Mexico City, these guys from um, uh, The Wicked Ones, for instance, right. these guys are are, are, are are doing great here in Mexico City. Um, who else, Pablito? I mean, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm, sure, I'm sure you know Binum Fabathi. Oh, yeah. From Mexico City as well. Electric Mountain from Mexico City as well. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Moon Watcher from Monterrey. From Monterrey, right. Um, so, the, the, in the stoner scene, there's a very live and vibrant stoner scene in Mexico City um, that we are um, still getting to know a little bit better because we are a new band. Um, but in the stoner scene, I would definitely recommend that. And then uh, um, there's this amazing female fronted group called Bondre. Bondre. From Mexico City, that are friends with Lou. Black Overdrive. Black Overdrive is, is another one of the biggest stoner bands in Mexico. They, they played some of the major festivals yeah, already. We can, I don't know we, can you know. you, we can email you at least our. I was just going to say, email me a list because I do want to get. I mean. You get stuck in a rut, and, and you know, this is like lately, I think Tennessee has been a real big hot spot here. But I do want to make sure that I'm branching out, that, that I'm paying attention to all the, because it's a worldwide phenomenon. I, I would have to say that more, and, and I could be wrong and I could be corrected, I think Stoner generally sells more in Mexico, in Europe, in, in Asia than what it necessarily does here in the States. And I, I think the scene, you know, as long as we're pay, we've got to pay attention to everybody coming from everywhere. Otherwise, we're not going to connect with the fans. And I know the scene is huge. I know death metal kind of big in, in the Mexican area, um, including Central America. So, yeah, send me that list so I can pay attention to them. Absolutely. Yeah, we'd be happy to. Yeah. Guys, is there anything I didn't ask you that you were just waiting for me to ask and I totally missed it? Uh, our social media. We are pretty much everywhere as uh, Demons, my friends. You can support us on Bandcamp. Uh, we have some merch there. There's uh, the albums there. And uh, uh, Spotify, these are almost every every streaming platform. Uh, on YouTube, our YouTube channel, Demons, my friends, we have a, a nice bunch of official, official videos, you know, there uh, from our four singles that we've been we 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 kept launching until the until september 8th so yeah we have four four videos there and there's a like a small documentary of the recording process of the album demon sim together so it's subtitled in english so you don't have to worry about it it's like a it can be enjoyed worldwide so no problem but i'll make sure that i've got the links yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll make sure I have all that in there. Guys, I can't thank you enough. I, I, it's really a, an honor for me because uh, we're a small channel and we're relatively new. And when a band, honestly, as good and as big as you guys, um, you've been wonderful supporters of what we're doing here, and I really appreciate it. No, 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 Scott. It's, it's our pleasure. Like, like um, I, I, wouldn't, I would end the interview by saying this. Um, we made you cry with, with Make Them Pay, uh, but you made me cry when you compared our music to My Arms, Your Hurts, because that was basically my favorite album when I was 14. So, so, like, ah, so I wasn't wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's those emotions. I love it when, when I hear something, because you're not overtly taking, but I'm talking specifically Lindgren era Opeth is what I hear in the leads and what I hear, but it's masterfully done and in the correct genre to do it in. <laughs> Thank you so, so much, Scott. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Um, stay in touch, please. And if you ever end up in North Carolina, let me know. Absolutely. We, we, we are definitely planning some East Coast states for 2024, so we will keep you posted as, as soon as those are in the books.